Hello and welcome to a short walkthrough on the Enterprise Data Gateway for Power BI, as well as a short walkthrough on the mashups of the JSON import feature of Power BI and the ESRI or Esri integration, which came out just a couple months ago and is a fantastic offering partnership between um, the geographic community, really, and the Microsoft Data Visualization community. So for on-premises data gateway, the enterprise edition or the personal edition, the only two differences are that one can run under a service account and one can run when you are not logged in or when an individual isn't logged in and the other cannot. That's the enterprise versus the personal. Okay, so I've installed an enterprise here and I just wanna give you a short overview of what I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to be refreshing that data and then we're going to go ahead and, and, and show you this in the online version of Power BI. So we can see here that I've done a very nice Esri visualization here, pulling in JSON data from a government agency regarding to complaints uh, on their banking services. And the great thing about Esri here is that what we can see is a context. We can see a context between the, uh, the, the, the community here of when I look at my reference layers, I'm able to, to choreograph my data with incredible economic and geographic based data from diversity, USA household average, household income, median ages and per capita income, and population densities. I've chosen population density here. And one thing that I do wanna note is that the, this aspect, this aspect is directly updated by simply clicking the refresh button, which will ultimately go to the data source, in this case, which is a JSON data connection endpoint, and actually automatically refresh that. We can schedule this using the Enterprise Data Gateway, which I will show you shortly. But let me jump in really quick and start showing you how we actually derive this JSON data source. Of course, when you click on the Get Data, we can move down here and we don't see JSON here, but if we click on more, we can go ahead and we can see JSON. We can also type in the word JSON and actually see it automatically get populated and updated. At which point we're gonna be provided with a direct Windows UI, which in which case we can actually put in the URL and then pull in that information, okay? So I'm gonna jump into the actual query editing window and I'm gonna edit this query. A fascinating thing you're going to see in here is as I'm cleansing this data, as I'm changing some of the data source and data type elements, all of these applied steps are actually recorded. So we can see here that even on, for example, let's look at this zip code data specifically. Now the zip code data, unfortunately, they've attempted to obfuscate this zip code data, right, in some instances with X's. Now I've gone ahead for the last two digits and I've been able to kind of uh, make it generic by adding two zeros where there were two X's. You'll see here, there were two X's here. All I had to do was actually right click this and I can go ahead and click transform or I can click to replace value. In this instance, I typed in two X's and I replaced with two zeros. Do I sacrifice a little bit of geographic accuracy? Yes, but without this simple and awesome feature, it wouldn't be possible. Other services such as MicroStrategy and Tableau do have similar capabilities here, but they're not really as direct editable. And you certainly can't watch all of the edits that you're doing up here in the applied steps, in which case you can actually click to change them or remove them entirely. You can also insert intermediary steps inside of here. So once you're done with your steps, you can just click apply and close. As I've not changed any of these, I don't have to click anything here. So I'm just gonna close that out, okay? So we can see here that now I've actually done an overlay of the population density based on the number of specific consumer complaints that are derived from, again, my JSON web data pull, okay? But ultimately, I'm gonna wanna need to connect this information inside Power BI so that I can schedule automatic refreshes from my local SQL Server instance, okay? So if I go over and I'm now I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna look inside uh, Power BI specifically. Now, when you install the Enterprise Gateway, you might be a little bit surprised that nothing really happens. Once you install the Enterprise Gateway and the services are set up, 
Um, you can go into services and update or change under what service account it's actually running under or et cetera. In, but the reality is, is that it's just going to start running effectively, right? Now, when I come in here, at which point I'm going to have to go to manage my gateways, right? So I have one gateway that I've actually pre-set up here that's called demo, okay? And I've set it up under, underneath Power BI uh, data gateway, and I've just tested the connection, right? But if I needed to make a new connection, I can just go ahead here and type a new data source. Now we can see here, because I didn't do a Windows authenticated connection, I'm doing a SQL authenticated connection just because I didn't want to spin up a new uh, Windows domain account, right? In which case, you would plug in the Windows domain login and the Windows domain login password. That is chosen via this method. I'm choosing basic, which ostensibly in this instance is SQL Server authentication. We can see here I've just listed my server name and I've listed the database, including the password, and I've clicked apply, right? Afterwards, you're able to actually go ahead and, and start adding individuals who are already authenticated to your Power BI service, and you can actually start adding them in if you want to have them be able to access this data source, right? So great, that's done, fantastic. Now I want to actually publish this Power BI file up to Power BI Online. So I'm just gonna go ahead up here and click the Publish button. In which case, I'm gonna be prompted because I pre-published this to just go ahead and replace this, okay? So it's going ahead and now it's gonna republish this. And I'm gonna be able to slice and dice this and do whatever I need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click this, which is a hyperlink that will take me directly to my Power BI gateway UI, rather. And we can see here Esri is taking a little second to load here just because it's mashing up lots of different data elements across and bringing in that valuable data here that again is best in class. You can't find anything else like this in the data discovery product window to my knowledge. And now it's up, okay? So I can go ahead and I can click subscribe here just like a couple other products. Tableau has this feature as well. But I can pin this to my live page which is also similar to favoring it in Tableau. I can one click refresh this, I can click explore, I can also do edit report. Edit reports is similar to web edits also in Tableau. However, this thing allows you to do even more. So I can go ahead and click here and I have a full breadth of all of the things that I would like to do, even in the Power BI client, including refresh, duplicating, saving, pinning, adding text boxes, etc. You can swap back to the reading view and here I am back again. So I hope this was a really nice walkthrough of just about breaking out the different types of data source connections you can do and how to refresh your data and publish it to your enterprise gateway and have a great time working with the new edition of Power BI, which comes out with updates every single month. If you have any questions, please send me a message. Thanks so much.